And it goes like this. I was an air traffic controller. I started work on the day that Harold Holt swam out to the Chinese submarine. I've never seen him again. He was down inside a shark in Panama, wasn't he? Yeah, well, that's what you say. I mean, it's all the giant conspiracy. But it goes like this. I joined air traffic control. Uh, in those days, it was part of the Department of Civil Aviation, which was part of the public service which was a bit unfortunate because the public thought that we were there to service them. And because our phone number was in the phone book, people would ring us up for advice. Yeah. What time does my auntie get in from Adelaide? <laughs> seven o'clock, ma'am. How can you tell? Well, it's aunties at seven and it's uncles at eight. All right. Um, but also, because we're in the phone book, we would get lots of calls about mysterious lights in the sky. And, of course, they're meteors, they're re-entering space junk, and occasionally they're aeroplanes. Uh, occasionally, it'll be military aircraft dropping flares out to sea looking for Russian submarines or even that escaped Chinese one. But, um, so over many, many years, we had lots of calls about you know, lights in the sky and flying saucers, and every time we would say, well, we know it was a piece of space junk because we could bring up NORAD and they would uh, identify the satellite or whatever. Or we would have an aircraft on radar. We could say, certainly, man, that's Calais Pacific flying Sydney to Hong Kong. And then their, their reply was always, don't you try to bullshit me. I know an aeroplane and I can say, blah, 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 blah. OK, whatever you like. Um, so, oh, yes, one good thing, one good flying uh, object we did see there was an advertising aeroplane operating out of Bankstown. It had all these flashing lights along the side. And it would fly out of Bankstown over Sydney at night. And it would just sort of stream an advertisement like Smoke Windfield, you know, that sort of thing back in the 70s. And one night the pilot got incredibly bored and on his way back to Bankstown he put up, Greetings, Earthlings. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Telephone switchboard lit up and held it down. Okay. So anyway, because air traffic control is a very big deal with uh, aircraft performance navigation, that sort of thing, uh, we were responsible for search and rescue, but I moved over from air traffic control to search and rescue. Which is, uh, and of course, the bane of our lives in search and rescue is psychics. Or what uh, Susan Gerber calls grief vampires, is that right? That's right. Okay. In those days, before we had incredibly good satellites and inputs and so on, quite often a boat or an aeroplane or a hiker would go missing and they, we could be searching for days, which of course generates headlines in the Daily Telegraph. And as sure as night follows day, one of these little rays of sunshine would be ringing us up to tell us where to look for the missing people. And I remember one phone call that began, aha, you're looking for so-and-so on the flight from Coolidge out of the banks now. I can smell onions. <laughs> and we go, what? <laughs> yes, you should be looking for someone who's got the smell of onions. <laughs> well, thank you very much, man. <laughs> but it, sometimes it's not quite so funny because these people would latch on to grieving relatives and they'd spin some yarn about. And I remember quite clearly, and I'm not, oh, I'm not bullshitting, one psychic ran... Uh, some family who said, look, your people survived the, the boat sinking and they're resting under a tree on the edge of the Coral Sea. Well, that narrows it down a bit because that's about a million square miles and about 400 billion trees on the edge of the Coral Sea. But, all jokes aside, that psychic got onto the family and they sold their house to fund their own search. And eventually, you know, they borrowed and they went bankrupt. And of course, you know, they bought it sunk. There was nothing you could do. But um, the subject of psychics and search and rescue has been well researched. My colleagues and I have talked, uh, talked about it at every international conference, over every pub and bar and meeting you could find. And we've all come to the same conclusion that psychics are a pain in the arse. <laughs> okay. And moving on from there, to get serious for a moment, I've been watching the reports on the shooting down of the Malaysian airliner over Ukraine. And I read the report that came out just the other day, and I can 
is a, to me is an old air traffic controller, airspace manager and that sort of thing, um, air pilot, navigator, there's, there's something missing in the report. Now what I think most people don't really know is that these airliners as they fly along are transmitting their identity and their, you know, their altitude and where they're to and from on a system called automatic dependent surveillance. Now any kid with a smartphone and an internet connection can identify any aircraft anywhere on planet Earth in real time. Now, that's not to say that over the Ukraine this missile launcher crew you know, had the internet, but I'd like to know. The other thing is, all of these launching systems consist of a launch vehicle, a command post, a target acquisition radar, surveillance radar, and so on. Now, to my layman's mind, surely these systems are interrogating aircraft as they fly around. I mean, the first rule of a battle is to identify the target. So what I'd really like to know is, did that ground system have ABS you know, or even a smartphone? If not, why not? And why isn't it part of the, the, uh, the official report? That might come in the criminal report that comes later. But therein lies the grounds of a wonderful conspiracy. So thank you all very much. Yeah.